Hello, friends. Welcome to episode 152 of the No Clip podcast. It was Half Life. We can say it now. It was Half Life. It was a Half Life documentary. That's what we're working on forever. It was a Half Life documentary. You can go watch it on the Valve YouTube channel. Frank Howley, how are you doing, my friend? How do you feel about not having to capture any more Half Life footage for the next who knows how long? It's it's great. I was on my Steam Deck last night and I was like looking at games and I had the updates like, oh, play Half-Life on your Steam Deck. And I had like a physical reaction like, ew, no, no, no. Like, I love Half-Life. And I'm like, I'm so done with Half-Life 1. I, I never want to play it again. You had to like eat French fries but it was for three months. Every yeah. day, I, like every day, I chipped it at every day for like at least an hour. Like every day, and you know, like, and I'm happy and it worked. But oh my, like I don't mind playing Half-Life 2 or anything else like Counter-Strike or whatever, but like. OG Half Life. I'm like, I'm good. Although the sound okay. effects are still good. Yeah, yeah, that's fair to say. Uh, Jeremy Jane, how you doing, my friend? Great job on the coloring last week. A real last minute affair, <laughs> as we sort of realized we had a little bit shorter to get that out than we than I, I had anticipated. Yeah, no, it was a it was a couple long days for a, a lot of footage, but uh, it was all worth it when I just went on YouTube and the algorithm suggested me a certain video by Valve's YouTube channel, and it was a uh, a shot that I shot and colored myself. It was this <laughs> kind of like weird. It's comparable to one time I had a friend send me a, a like a meme, and it was Todd Howard, and it was a shot from our Bethesda documentary. That's funny. And I was like, I that did I shot that? And my friend was like, No, you didn't. That's like that's too weird. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the uh, Yes. Great job. That box shot was just too beautiful not to use. We I did a couple of versions for them of that thumb literally the night before I submitted it or the night I was submitting it. And a bunch of them were over the top. This, that, and I was like, I said, it and I was like, it's probably going to be this one because that box looks so nice and it's clean and it's good. And yeah, um, it's out. You can go check if you want to watch a 65 minute documentary on the development of my favorite video game of all time, um, Half-Life, which was turned 25 this past Sunday. Um, you can do so. Created by our uh, production company, Secret Tape. Uh, we filmed it up in um, Seattle. Uh, Joey Famili, big shout out to Joey as well, who um, joined up to uh, to help us do that. Joey works on Tested, and he's an ex-Whiskey Media dude, part of that whole wider Giant Bomb community back in the day. And a lovely guy. He's and Jeremy's neighbor, it turns out as well. Um, I did D and D with him for years during COVID. We had a little D and D group going, a couple of ex sort of giant bomb people. So um, it was cool to get him involved. I will just say this outright: I have produced a video for our patrons, which went up on Thanksgiving, which is basically me just like talking about the production of it. Obviously, I'm not just like talk. I'm not like giving all of Valve's secrets away for an hour. It's mostly about like how we shot stuff, how we edited stuff, um, how the production went, uh, you know, just bits and bobs like that, like a general rundown of kind of like this is how we approach the motion graphics, for instance. Great shout out to Dan, of course, as well for doing awesome work on that. Um, all, all, all those chapter breaks were super cool. Uh, and obviously this isn't technically no clip work, but it's 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 funny the amount of people who I was seeing comments or would jump in on the on the Discord and they say, man, this felt like a no clip doc and I was super bummed for Danny. And then I got to the credits and saw the whole crew is there. You know, the whole crew popped up in fact i even saw people say that when they saw the thumbnail they were like oh they're really going no clip on that aren't they that's amazing <laughs> so i don't know maybe i shouldn't be flattered by that maybe <laughs> maybe we're a bit rote in our production No, that's good that's like uh when you hear carlos say San- like you hear a carlos santana song and you're like i know who's playing the guitar you know we that's our flavor, lick i guess yeah, yeah exactly that's how it sounds like so yeah we'll, we'll go too crazy into the the details on how it came together and how it got made and all that sort of stuff if you want any of that stuff um please feel free to go over to our patreon i are putting that up for five dollar members so they can all you can all uh, chip in on that um yeah and enjoy it and and hopefully you enjoyed the documentary and uh yeah hopefully the start of of some exciting new stuff for us on the secret tip side as well um big part of this whole thing is to basically try and create a more stable foundation for uh, us all and have, uh, have you know, diversify that income and all that sort of stuff. Uh, speaking of diversifying income, I am planning on getting the store up in the next, hopefully by the time this podcast is up, the store will be up. Um, I guess it's Black Friday. Is that is that the day after Thanksgiving's Black, Fr- Black Friday? Is that right? Yeah, that thing. So I, I guess. So. Or did, was Cyber Monday, is that what we call the other one? So it'll be up for one of those anyway. 
um, it should be stored at noclub.video and we have uh, bro- loads of new designs um, loads of new bits and bobs there's t-shirts there's hoodies there's cups there's glasses we've stunt derby stuff um, I'm finishing up some secret tapes merch actually as well to stick that up there as well um, if you want to check that stuff out but today we're here to talk about video games once we give a massive shout out to all of our battle pass holders battle royale games Arno Richard Matheson James Drury James Brown Mark Rojas Ryan Cobb Tucker Morgan Crimson Cyclists, Sven Hooster, Tim Robinson, Forrest Pruitt, Darren Birmingham, Eric Hamilton Schneider, Cameron Ladd, Alex Sharp, Alex Goucher, The Alexes, George Sakotis, Jacob God Serve, Tohir Tiliev, and of course, Ryson. Thank you all so much for having our backs as we produced all of these documentaries. We have a lot of documentaries coming out. NHL 94 is up for early access. It should be up today. It's coming up. I have a plan to go up on Friday. So I found one... I found like three frames where the adjustment layer, I I fucked with it too much and it didn't cover the color for like half a second. And I've thought about going into the studio and re-rendering it, but I've decided I'm not a psychopath and I'm just going to leave it be. It's okay. It's a 50. It's one of those things nobody will notice. Nobody will notice except me. And maybe Jeremy who edited this documentary and passed it off to me and then I fucked it up. So just... (laughs) I will notice, but that's He'll okay. Notice. I'm <laughs> not the I'm not the target audience, you know. <laughs> NHL doc, doc. Well, how about maybe the target audience is people who like me watching me wipe out on a on an ice hockey rink. That's then, true. I meant I'm not the target audience because in the process of editing, I've watched this a thousand times. Oh, you've watched it already. Yeah, Have I, you? I've, I've I'm familiar with the contents of this. Do you not support our channel, Jeremy? Are you not subscribed because you've watched? <laughs> I mean, them I all? I have a special JavaScript that refreshes the video every ten seconds. But... <laughs> Viewbot us. Yeah. Look, man, this isn't Gamespot ten years ago. We're not viewbotting our stuff. Okay, I mean, I mean, uh, 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 shut it anyway, down. Delete the podcast. Delete the podcast. We've said too much. We've said too much. Everyone does it. Everyone does it. Um. Anyway. Uh, let's. We could talk about some new video games, but first of all, how's everyone been doing? How was how was your weekend, Frank Howdy? I feel like you were you were sort of like the the local like farm vet. You sort of had to be on call for oh, yeah. any for two a.m. when I ask you for a bunch of four by three gameplay of Office Complex. You had yes. to be able to record it and get it over to me. How how are you, how did you do on the weekend? Was it nice seeing the dock up? Yeah. Oh my. I mean, I I, I probably rewatch it like. I don't know, like six to eight times. Like even on a bike ride, <laughs> wow. I just listen to it. I'm like, it's so good. Like I think all the soundscape, like the music you used to, all the interview bites. Like I don't know, it's very, 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 very good. Um, and so it was a rush seeing all the feedback. Like at this point, where it's, it has over two million views. But um, no, it, it was very, very cool to, to have it out. And then yeah, to kind of have like, oh, okay, I can rest a bit. Like I yeah, because like I said, I'm, every day I'm like ready just in case. What do we need today? What do we need today? And I think the last shot. I uh, we got was like three days before the documentary came out. I got like thirty minutes of Quake One, and I was oh, and I did. think I think yeah. that was the last thing I had to touch. Um, but then since then, yeah. So I did so much over like the last week. Like Wednesday, I think it was Wednesday night was the Hives, which was like phenomenal. Oh, yeah, nice. Like I had seen them twenty years ago, but it'd been so long I forgot. So I saw them again. Phenomenal. Like the music is great, but like the front man is the funniest, most like confident <laughs> performer of all time. Like. Every it's like every, in between every song, it'd be like a five minute like just riff raff of like, ladies and gentlemen, you have a you have congratulate yourselves, you have the ticket to the hottest show in town, the Hives are in Los Angeles. You beat out everybody outside. You got a ticket. You're in. This is the best night of your lives. Uh, now everybody, put away your phones. We want you to inject yourself intravenously with rock and roll, the good sound of the Hives. Put away your phones. So they would do a whole song, and then at the end. What's wrong with you people? Why aren't you taking pictures? Why aren't you taking videos? Get your phones out. This is so fucking cool. Like, he <laughs> was constantly great. just fucking with the audience. <laughs> so like, please see the hives if you can. Phenomenal. Thursday night was Wrestling Revolver, which is an indie promotion. But what, what it was, was uh, AEW had a pay-per-view in, in LA that Sunday. So all the AEW people were in town. So like this, this show, the one that Ronda Rousey was on, was like a charity yeah. event for all the Maui fires. So it was an excellent, uh, it was an excellent indie show. I got to see a lot of favorites, a lot of like big AW people like John Moxley, sort of Strickland, uh, hangman page, a bunch of people came out. Um, John Moxley, who's like this big AW guy. Uh, he, at one point he was just in the crowd and he wrestled in front of like everybody, just like walking with a guy and beating up and, you know, doing their play fighting. But like he gave everyone in the crowd. So at one point he came literally where we were sitting, sat, you know, sat down and did a spot. And it was like, I just love oh, wow. that very like house show vibe of wrestling. Uh, and then Friday was playing a bunch of games. Saturday I went to Little Tokyo. I got a bunch of manga, and then uh, since then just just been playing a bunch of games. So yeah, I uh, I feel like I got to like 
have a crazy week and now I'm kind of resting a little frazzled, but happy. Yeah, I see on your list of games here, you have no new games, but then a load of games that are part of our upcoming Game of the Year celebrations. Everyone on the crew, Jesse as well, is uh, playing uh, um, a bunch of the games that maybe we didn't cover off earlier in the year. I know I have a, I'm like, fucking Baldur's Gate 3 is staring at me, man. I gotta fucking, I gotta get in there and do some more. Um, So uh, we'll maybe touch on that stuff in a little bit. First of all, though, I do want to, and I want to talk about it, like, I want to talk about Half-Life Deathmatch playing it on a Steam Deck, but let's not over Half-Life this um, <laughs> uh, episode right now. Uh, Jeremy, let's jump over to you, first of all, because I know there's a game that you're really uh, excited to talk about. A indie game that came out um, earlier this month. It's on Steam, and it's called Typecast. $5. Um, this is the one you played this. You talked to us about this before. Right? This is the one where you're, like, typing. It's like typing of the dead. Or was it Frank who talked about it? No, yeah, I I read it up before because so I played this game before it was 1.0. Um, the oh, developer sent me a DM on Twitter and asked if I wanted to play test it, uh, and obviously I said yes because I like video games. Um, <clears throat> so I played a little bit and gave feedback and stuff, and then kind of stepped away from it while it released to get fresh eyes on it for the 1.0 release. Um, and only kind of this last week have I gotten really into actually playing it proper uh, to the point that now I I've cracked the top 100. Oh, on nice boards for typecast. So. <laughs> <laughs> listener if you're out there and you want to play this game E-sports. come at me dethrone me um what's your username again uh it's it's, it's george wilhelm friedrich <laughs> hegel uh if you see me i think i'm around i'm floating around 85 on the leaderboards excellent um so this is a I, i've explained this game before but i'll briefly explain it again and then talk about it more in depth uh so this is a uh I guess it's I guess I'd call it like a roguelike like you it's runs you started over but I I don't know if roguelike is really appropriate here it's kind of arcadey but essentially you're a you're a a crystal orb that is floating around on the screen and you're controlling the orb with your mouse like a a total one-to-one sync so if you move your mouse the it moves appropriately like a mouse on your desktop right Um, and these little enemies are coming at you from the edges of the screen uh kind of like vampire survivors although mm. this game is so different i'm hesitant to make that comparison yeah yeah it, in screenshots it looks like vampire survivors but I'm, when you're playing it it's a whole yeah. other kettle of fish yeah exactly i th- i think that that's like a good hook in for people to get curious about it mm. but i think it's so it's so different as an experience from that i'm hesitant to even make the comparison but um this is like vampire survivors but it is it is so not relaxing that it's like the <laughs> other end of the spectrum um but but you are killing guys and collecting gems from them and kind of powering up and getting multipliers and stuff so uh as these enemies come at you, uh, each enemy has a letter on it. So like the basic enemies will all have Q, W, or E. Um, and basically what happens is there's a circle around your character sprite. And if you hit the corresponding key of an enemy when they're within range, it shoots out a little like magic missile and kills them. Um, if you hit the wrong letter or you hit a letter of an enemy who's not in range, it jams you and then oh, cool. you can't shoot for a minute. So, uh, so then it becomes about like being super evasive. So at first you can't just you know, mash your keyboard over and over again. <laughs> well, so actually I did the tutorial there. This game has so much more going on under the hood than I realized. Um, and I was wondering how people were getting millions of points. And then I actually did the tutorial and there's a bunch of mechanics. Like if you jam, you can uh, repeatedly hit the letter that you jammed on to unjam faster and things like that. Oh, fine. Um, but because the screen is getting so hectic and so chaotic and dudes are, you know, <laughs> collapsing upon you and you're like trying to not only move the mouse fast, but also kind of like slow it down and nimbly thread the needle and get between enemies on the screen. Um, it's it's kind of like I, I often think it feels like the like you're navigating your desktop and all the icons are like descending <laughs> upon your mouse. That's right. how it feels sometimes. Especially um, as the mouse is one to one, like you said, which is, yeah. not you know, it's not there's no like, you know, like dragging someone across or having them. It's like you, you can literally really just go as fast as if you're on exactly. a desktop. Exactly, yeah. And you you would think that that would make it easy because you can move so quickly, but the screen gets so dense with enemies that you're like doing these incredibly precise maneuvers to get through enemies all the while you're mashing Q to unjam. And like, <laughs> I I have never, I had an experience with this game this week that I've, I don't think I've ever had with a game in my life, which is um the the like a good run will be, you know, like four to six minutes. Yeah. And by the end of it, I'm like, I'm crying. Like water is pouring out of my eyes because this game like is so tense. intense. I, it, well, no, yeah. it's like, I can't, I can't close my eye. I, like I can't blink <laughs> because there's so much happening that like, it's is not, your wrist shagged as well. Is it like super tense? Cause you're like, it's not, I, I haven't even like noticed that. Picture's probably, wrist. I, I probably already have destroyed my wrist by editing a billion hours. Of video. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, but, uh, but I just like, 
I'll get to the end of a run and I won't even realize that I'm not blinking, but there'll be water pouring out of my <laughs> eyes. And I don't know. I, f- I feel like that's like, that's like the box quote in a weird way, you know, right. like those nineties video games ads where they're like, it's so intense. You're like, eyes will bleed. Um, so yeah, this, this game is so much fun. It also has a, uh, it has like, you know, remember in Hades, they had the heat system where you could kind of modify your difficulty. Yeah. Make it um, harder. So- Exactly. So it has a similar thing like that, uh, where you can modify the difficulty, but it is a is a points modifier. So basically, you can make the game harder for yourself uh, and make it easier to get high scores and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's like a slow motion you can trigger with the right uh, the right mouse button. There's like a little bomb thing you can trigger that like kills enemies around you without typing and stuff like that. And you can kind of like modulate to your play style uh, and get point modifiers for that. But um, yeah, it's a uh, I mean, it's it's just like it's one of those games that's it's so easy to grasp what the gameplay is like, but then you play it, and there's like a, a weird amount of depth to its mechanics for how simple it is. There's levels to this shit, man. Yeah, it's Typecast. really, really, really good. I highly recommend it. I like, I enjoyed it, and I was like, I'm a little biased because I play tested it, and then I got away from it and came back to it, and now it's probably one of my favorite games this year. Guessing it doesn't work well in the Steam Deck. Just gonna go out, go out of my maybe maybe with the weird little touchpad thing they have on there, but I, I I've never used that thing. So yeah, I didn't Who look knows? it up. I know um I, I think I saw the developer post something about looking into controller support, and I was cool. thinking it might be interesting because then like my my mental map of uh like that's one of the one things that, about this game that took a while to get used to is I'm not used to to having like if I see B X triangle on a screen for a button prompt, I know exactly yeah. where that is. This Keyboards. there's like a little bit of mental friction for me to be like okay where is where is h uh just because th- like I, I i can type without looking but especially when if you could jam you know yeah. you can't just hit delete and keep going you know you exactly gotta, or have um, or have google auto corrected for you or something like that <laughs> yeah so it's a uh, it, it just like it turns the keyboard into a controller in a really interesting way yeah. it feels novel and it feels decoupled from something like typing of the dead where you're you're like typing full words and you kind of get like a local sync between the letters this yeah, is just that's like true. that's true that's just it, your keyboard becomes a huge controller covered in buttons uh so yeah i don't know I think it's the like the indiana jones walking across the thing where you got to make sure you don't hit the wrong one every time yeah exactly that's cool um, uh, so, typecast yeah, a, available on steam uh yeah very positive reviews 67 of them so far so go support this indie game like i said 4.99 uh jeremy's going to bat for it twice now so um sounds like a really cool game should we add it to our little game of the year list do you think for everyone else jeremy yeah yeah, yeah. it's definitely gonna be Makes a contender awesome cool we're gonna have some interesting categories this year in case you don't know or the way we have done it well we kind of made up this thing last year and it, I think we're all pretty happy with how it ended up, where we picked 10 games that were sort of the games that we thought would be the 10 games that we enjoyed the most. I think we copped out and picked 11, if I remember. And then we gave them their own award. We sort of fashioned an award around each game uh, instead of sort of creating arbitrary categories and then giving them to an award. We just gave the games awards and then gave them arbitrary categories that they fit into. Um, so, uh, yeah, who knows? Maybe that'll be best typing game. Of most eye-watering. <laughs> most eye-watering. That's a good one. I like that. Um, okay. Uh, I Speaking of, we talked about the Steam Deck a second ago. I got the uh, PlayStation Portal, which is the new piece of tech uh, Sony put out, said this over, that is a, um, uh, God, it's so shiny. You can see my notes for the podcast. Whoa. You can see the whole like reflected back. Uh, yeah, Frank's waving. There the, <laughs> I'm not sure why you're waving because you're also on screen. Presumably, but, you know. It's an endless mirror. Exactly. Um, so this is the, uh, it's basically a remote play device. So if you connect to the Wi-Fi and you have a PlayStation somewhere, whether in your house or on the other side of the world that is also connected to the Wi-Fi, you can basically play your PlayStation 5 games on this device. So this is a remote play device. It's got a very nice screen on it. It, uh, I don't know what it purports to send the signal over, but I'll say that there were times at the start where it was a little bit compression artifacty in a way, but it quickly synced up for me and then was was pretty good um i used my ultimate use case for latency whenever i use anything that's remote or if i want to figure out if the monitor is broken and the milliseconds are all off is i play rocket league because i feel like that is like a a pretty uh, intense like second by second thing and there's definitely there has to be some lag right because it's like a bloody remote play device that's sending the signal over um 
but it's it's the it's I, I was able to play online games and felt fairly pretty comfortable in it. And I have played. I'm trying to remember what the other thing I played. I think I played Rocket League on PlayStation Now before. Is that what it's called? The streaming thing that they use. Um, and I had I did not enjoy that experience at all. And I've and I, I've had other situations where I've I've used some latency stuff, and I was surprised actually by how um, well this one did. I'm not sure how well it would do it if I was in a different country. Like when I go home to Ireland, I'm going to bring this device and I'm going to use it there and turn on my PlayStation 5 in California remotely and see how it works. Um, but uh, but I'll, I guess I'll, I'll see how that goes. Otherwise, it's pretty... It's what you see is what you get. It is... If, sorry, if you're not looking at the actual video of the podcast here, it is basically... Imagine somebody took a iPad and then cracked a PlayStation 5 controller in half and stuck the iPad in the middle. Like, I'm not even joking, right? Like, that that's basically what it looks like, right, lads? Can I see the back of it? I just sure. want to see. It's, it just looks like, when you hold it that way, it looks like the widest. It looks like a PlayStation 5 controller made of gum that somebody pulled <sighs> until it stretched. It do, you're right. It just went... It's very cartoonish. It does, you like my creepy eyes? <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> terrifying. Eyes. Um, there's one other little thing. There's like a touch. It's a touch screen as well. And there's one other, like if you want to, might as well turn it on actually. If you want to access the sort of like on-screen display for this thing, it's pretty low. Um, like there's not many settings on it. You know, it's pretty, what you see is what you get. Uh, you can like do a little touch screen thing in the side and it'll pull in this menu, which does like brightness and airplane mode and stuff like that. Um, but uh, yeah, boot up your PlayStation 5 and then play some games on it. So it's been fun. I've been playing games... I, I've had this with the Steam Deck. I feel like I did the exact same thing when I talked about the Steam Deck for the first time, where suddenly there was games, just heard my PlayStation turn on there. Um, suddenly there was games where that for some reason I wasn't sitting in front of a couch playing, but I was totally uh, excited playing them on in bed. And I ended up playing a bunch of the Wipeout Pulse um, collection or the Wipeout collection that they brought out a couple of years ago. I uh, played some Bloodborne in bed, which was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't... Um, expecting that and then of course i played a lot of nhl 94 which seems like perhaps you know it's the real you get a steam deck you play vampire survivors problem of um using the tech to you know but like there you go there's nhl 94 playing on little little guy here this is a 199 dollar product though so that is unless you have a use case for this you are you know i think if unless you're in a situation where you play a lot of playstation games and you really like to lie down in bed or don't have don't like your tv or your tv gets used by your partner or your roommate or something like that and you want a a way of playing it or perhaps that you like you work somewhere else or you go travel a lot and you want to have access to to that library like i said i haven't stress tested over any distance at all i've only ever i didn't even i should i should test in the office to see how it does here while I still have the office where I'm pulling out of there at the moment um, to see if that works. But um, yeah, I, I mean, it does what it says on the tin and it does it well. Um, but it's a real case by case, I think, whether or not this thing is, this could easily be incredibly useful to you or just an absolute, you never use this thing ever um, situation. There you go. PlayStation Portal. Any questions from you lads? Yeah, I, I didn't know it was 199 so I was like, wait, it, it's out of stock everywhere as of right now, but I'm like, okay, it, yeah. I'm interested. How, how uh, like, compared to the Steam Deck, what's the weight of it? I imagine it's much lighter because light. yeah, the hardware's not on it. It's not crazy light. Um, I literally have a Steam Deck here. Let me, let me do the, let me do the comparison. God, they're really similar, actually. Yeah? Yeah, I might have trouble... Yeah, weirdly, it is actually, yeah, it's about, they're about the same. It kind of feels like, it's not, it's not light. It doesn't feel flimsy, which I think is actually maybe in its favor that it feels, but like, I didn't feel tired. In the same way with the Steam Deck, I remember the first time I reviewed the Steam Deck on here, I kind of said, well, I haven't done a really long play session with it yet, or play session with it yet, so I don't know, but, and then I did, and it was fine, so, um, yeah, I haven't had that experience on this. But then I tend to play like lying down with my hands resting a bit. So I don't, I don't like, I don't, I don't know, play lying on the couch with the thing above my head mm-hmm. or something that would be, you know, particularly tiring. And I'm surprised it's, yeah, it's out of stock already. I got, they probably didn't make a million of these anyway. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah. Uh, how's the battery life so far? Does it seem like uh, it lasts well? Yeah, pretty good. Again, I, I, it's, it's just got a USB C, um, 
a charger on it so it plugs in the same way the playstation 5 controller does so it's kind of good because i always have one of those just hanging around or if the battery goes low i i i I plug it in um i feel again like the stress test for that is usually when you go on a trip and you don't have easy access to that type of power um so i'm not quite sure on that front but yeah it doesn't seem it seems like it's comparable with the Steam Deck, I've gotten used to it being like something I need to charge, you know, whenever I put it down, especially when you play games like Baldur's Gate, you know, it's mm. it's it go, it gets through pretty fast. Um, uh, uh, there's no fan on this, though. There's no I don't think so. At least it doesn't like because it's not really processing. Mu- you know what I mean? All it's doing is a video signal. So it's it's not like Baldur's Gate when you get in it, you put that game <laughs> up and suddenly it's like fucking SpaceX or taking off or something, you know, Um so yeah, not not crazy on that end. I'm I'm assuming does it have speaker output or and or headphone jack? That okay. That was actually it's really good you brought this up because um so there is this there's speakers on it and they're quite good. They have a 3.5 mil jack at the bottom. I'm pretty sure. I have never let me literally test it right now just to make sure <laughs> it works properly. This is breaking news. I'm testing. Seems like it's working to me. Um, the thing I wanted to bring up was, uh, yeah, it works fine. Um, Bluetooth. So because of awful proprietary nonsense, if you have a Bluetooth headset or you have a pair of AirPods or whatever it is, they will not work on this. You need to buy Sony's like $200 or $150 headphone, Bluetooth headset, whatever it's called. I forget what the heads, what it's called. Really? I, yeah. I've never, I don't Crazy. use Bluetooth headphones. I didn't know there was like proprietary connections like that for wireless. It's very arbitrary. Like it's, yeah. it's very like AirPods are the same thing. Like there's, there's a lot of like, oh, you can't use that with that. And it's just, they, I don't know. Is it a, I don't think it's a licensing thing. I think Sony owns the Bluetooth license. Am I right in that? I forget. But for whatever reason, they have, to my knowledge, this is something that they have decided to do and that they could patch. Um, and I think this happened with the play. Am I right in remembering? I feel like this happened with the PlayStation 4 at one stage where they, you could only ever use their ones and then they they changed it. Hmm. Um, but yeah, so that is a pain in the ass. If you want to use wireless headset, if you have an existing one, good luck. Um, if you use wired, it's not a big deal. Uh, the speakers on it are good. I like the quality of the speakers on it. But yeah, good call. Uh, yeah, PlayStation Portal, not the portable. PSP has not returned. Although <laughs> this would be this is a big, big fucking PSP. It'd be a really cool PSP. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, it feels like a cool PSP. But the only random ass question is like, can you watch like Netflix on it or HBO Max? I feel like there's no reason yeah. to. But can you watch Blu-rays? On, like, yeah. So I don't know. when you boot this thing up, when you go into the menu, it is your PlayStation Five menu. Okay, cool. Like, in its entirety. It's not a facsimile of it. It is streaming the PlayStation 5 instead of to your television to this screen. So if you use your PlayStation to, you know, boot up Netflix or I don't know what the most esoteric thing you can do on a PS5 is, like look at your photos. Do they still do that shit? (laughs) Reminisce. (laughs) Reminisce. Whatever it is. Um you know, it'll work, which means every single game cool. works, right? And it does all the same shit. Like, I played Tony Hawk on it a bunch. That was good fun. Uh, and it did the whole, like, thing where it pops up, you know, you can't capture the gameplay now because they're playing some video oh, or whatever. Yeah. Like, literally all of the PS5 stuff that would hit your TV screen is one-to-one hitting this thing. Um, oh, so, man. yeah, it's, so everything's on the table in terms of what you use in the PS5 ecosystem. You can use the store. You can, you know, you can do whatever you want. You can change your video output settings to your TV for no reason. But if you want, you can do it. Knock yourself out. Um, so that's pretty cool, I guess. I'm uh, so- the only thing I have to say is that uh, PlayStation Portal sounding so much like PlayStation Portable <laughs> is like if you like if you're a mumbler, I feel like this is a very confusing naming convention. Very, yeah, it's not a PlayStation Portable por- Portal. Portal. Oh, this PlayStation is my Portal. portal. I just playing with Portal. My, my portal? My, yeah, portal. And then if also, you're it's t- called Portal. Yeah, also portal. like Portal. Also, the there's a game portal. called Portal, yeah. yeah. And also, if you were to, like, italicize it, you call it a PSP. Yeah, <laughs> right? exactly. Still a yeah. PSP. So. Sony, we're available for consultation. I know. It was probably the same person who named the Vita, which is maybe the worst named console in the history of humanity. And that's like saying Vita? something. Vita. It's like, a, it's like a name of a cracker that, like... 
you know, is is gluten free or something. You it know? sounds like a uh, like a Polish soft drink or something. Vita, yeah, exactly, yeah, Vita. It's probably sponsored by some famous Polish sports person. You know, Vita. Drink of Vita, brought to you by Martian Podolski or something. <laughs> Uh, there's probably a lot of Martian Podolskis. There's a lot of Martians. And at least Mar- one Mar- is the MVP. Marchin, not Martians. I don't know why I yeah. keep saying that. What did you say? I said at least one of them is the MVP. At something. least one of them. Yeah. Most valuable Polish. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, lastly, I will mention um, on my end, uh, Half-Life Deathmatch on Steam Deck. Um, Half-Life on Steam Deck, so as part of the, you know, to celebrate the launch of our documentary, uh, Valve also patched half-life which i thought was very nice of them um no it's part of the 25th anniversary celebrations uh valve done a bunch of uh super cool secret work in the background they got the um game working on the uh, steam deck they got uh, a bunch of fixes done to the back end of uh, the gold source engine which then subsequently broke all of the other gold source games on steam so counter-strike 1.6 was down for two days <laughs> the composing force wasn't booting um, they are uh, going through. I'm led to believe that they are going through that stuff at the moment. I think they fixed CS and there's a couple of other things uh, happening. Um, they added a bunch of. Uh, they had a great little website they made that had like an interactive crowbar game on it, which was cool. Where you could kill the head crabs on the screen. Uh, you get a little achievement as well, which was fun. At wallpapers, a uh, bunch of bits and bobs. But uh, the big one for me was the uh, Steam Deck stuff which was rad oh i meant did i mention the four multiplayer maps i forget if it is they made four new multiplayer maps too which is pretty cool um but yeah i got to play half-life on steam deck and honestly i did not play much half-life during this production frank was doing all the gameplay we sort of had to really um divide and conquer on this one because we had like i think seven weeks maybe to from interview to no not even from like setting up the interviews to getting this thing out so um i played a bit but i know i i used to like in high school after school study i used to play through half-life from start to finish in my head like i know half-life literally from start to finish um so i was actually really excited to go play some half-life so i played it on my a steam deck i played a bunch of it and it works super well i'm like very surprised at how easy it is to work uh, they obviously added in controller support for the game um and yeah swapping weapons and stuff it's definitely hard like you kind of want to play it on easy and like maybe save scum a little bit because like you know the marine fights and stuff if you can't aim at people that well when they're far away it's a little bit tricky but um but i really enjoyed it uh and it it works really well so if you didn't pick up half-life for free while it was free um uh well i guess that's tough shit on you but uh if you did uh or you just already own it which a lot of people presumably already do um on steam deck i i would recommend doing that and then playing half-life one death like was it crazy to see there was like twenty two thousand people in half-life deathmatch servers or something during the weekend it was completely insane it was higher than there was more people playing half-life than starfield over the weekend which was quite funny <laughs> that's awesome um i had 25 year old game but the uh uh, it was great crack. There was so much fun having so much fun everyone playing the game over the weekend. And um, so I enjoyed jumping into some multiplayer stuff as well. Um, and to do that on a Steam Deck just felt like some, you know, 2023 bullshit. So that was a lot of fun. It was a fun weekend to be a Half Life fan. I'll say that. And, you know, we got that with Alex as well. And that makes me very, very happy. So that was, that was cool. Happy 25th anniversary, uh, Half Life. Pretty cool. Uh, Frank, you have some games here that you were chopping away at. Is there anything you want to talk about in particular or? Yeah, I mean, it was just like, I think it was just finished Half-Life. I finally felt like I had like a little bit of freedom to like just play whatever I wanted without like worrying about the next project or anything. So I just wanted to relax in bed with my Steam Deck and I ended up landing on Dave the Diver finally. Like I. Oh, cool. I, pl- I played like the first hour, maybe many, many moons ago. But it was just like, I didn't get hooked, but like, that's been the game where I wake up and in the morning I'll do like a run and then before going to bed, I'll do a run or sometimes I'll complete the day and night cycle. And so, uh, I, I know that it's black Friday or whatever. There's cyber Monday, whatever psycho Tuesday, whatever. There's so much stuff happening. So I think it's like discounted to like 15 bucks instead of 20. So people were hesitant. Now's a really good time. Also, it's now like post 1.0 launch there's i'm still you're, i'm still unlocking stuff there's so much crap in this game but uh what do you a, make of the uh what do you make of the weapon dude oh the like the yeah 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 the, the guy the guy looking for his lum chan figures is very good yeah. it's very good uh i just unlocked a grenade launcher like 
I, I'm eager to keep seeing where this game goes. So I, I like it a lot, but I guess, uh, yeah, I guess by the time this podcast goes up, sales are still going on. If people have recommendations of games or, or stuff I might have dismissed before, what, what are things worth picking up on Black Friday or discounted? I missed it. That PS5 game, Forspoken, that came out like in February, yeah. uh, it dropped down to like 19 bucks and they completely sold out of their stock on Amazon. But that was one game I was like interested in getting that I, com- that I, that I didn't get, get to play. Interesting. Yeah, there is a bunch of stuff here for sale for sure. I see. Yeah, Dave the Diver down to that's ah, sixteen bucks. It's okay, down twenty okay. percent. Um, uh, yeah, a bunch of stuff. Remnant Two is down ten bucks as well. That's a that's a great game. Yeah, I, I wish I played more of that this year. Um, Jedi Survivor that came out this year. That's crazy. <laughs> I did not touch that. There's so many games that came out this year that I feel like I haven't played enough of. Um, yeah, cool stuff. Resi 4 as well. Did you play the uh, Separate Ways thing? Yeah, so I, I finished my new game plus run of Resident Evil 4. So I did Leon campaigns twice, and now I'm like, I got I did like a... like I, Every time I play Resident Evil, I'll do the first thing organically, just enjoy it. Then I'll do a second run where I get the collectibles, get all the trophies. So now <laughs> I finally started the Ada Wong campaign, which only came out, I think, last month or September. Like, it came out pretty recently. And um, it's really cool because essentially you're almost like playing the Resident Evil 4 campaign in reverse. It's like Ada Wong, like... I think she like gets evidence and now she has to get out. And as you're finding her back, you you have these little crossover events with Leon that adds more context. But it's cool because like now I know those levels so way so well and I feel very confident having played RE4 like twice, where it's like it's very fun. Whereas the first time you play Resident Evil 4, it's terrifying. It sucks. It's so hard. <laughs> but now I'm playing it as Ada Wong. It's awesome. So that's like, yeah, I think even today or just this week, I'll keep playing it. But yeah, and I think that was only like a ten dollar DLC if you if you uh own the base game. So I really like it. I haven't played too much of it, but it was just like, damn, this is it's better than I I don't know what I expected, but it's uh it's better than what I expected. It's very fun. And Ada Wong has oh, a yeah. gra- she has a grappling hook. So like she can do a melee where she can like grapple onto a zombie and then charge into it and kick it. So it's just like it's very silly, but but in a good way. So it's I it's it's really good. That yeah, that's it. Love to see it. Uh fifty percent off EA Sports FC. And I was like 24 and I'm like, that's wild. That game only came out a few months ago. And then I was like, oh, mixed reviews. And I went through and it's got like a lot of thumbs down reviews. Huh. My favorite one is right here at the top where Lin San says uh, product received for free and it got a thumbs down. I'd rather buy Winrar. Oh, so there you go. Oh my that's, God. that's really sticking it to them. Scorchiating. Yeah. <laughs> Scorchio. Uh, Jeremy, you also played some small saga. So this yes. came out last week. Uh, I saw a lot of screenshots of this um, on Twitter and stuff. Another indie game, uh, very positive with 369 nice reviews on Steam. Uh, what is this? What is it's like a is it a JRPG with like cute little an- animals or? Yeah, yeah. This is uh, it. Honestly, it's coincidental that it launched around the same time as the Super Mario RPG remake because it reminds me a lot of the original Super Mario RPG. Um, it is a pixel art. Uh, kind of like isometric are inspired by kind of like 90s Super Nintendo era JRPGs game. Um, it's a you play as a little mouse and it's kind of like uh, for people who are familiar with Redwall, it kind of reminds me of Redwall a little bit where it's like, um, uh, I guess not super like Redwall. It's because Redwall, they're like a whole civilization of badgers and stuff. This is more like rodents uh, anthropomorphized, but living in the real world. Um, oh, cool. So there are like humans and the humans are referred to as gods and stuff. So there's a there's <laughs> so a lot ratatouille. of ratatouille. So it's ratatouille. Exactly. <laughs> you work in a kitchen and you're like French. Um, uh, the thing I really like about this game is I, I feel like uh, and again, uh, the comparison is to Super Mario RPG, one of my favorite games of all time. I, I really like when games take RPG tropes and are kind of hyper aware of what an RPG audience expects. And then they translate those concepts into like unfamiliar territory or something that's like just abstracted enough to feel a little different. So like in Super Mario RPG, you know, in a typical RPG, you have like attack and spell and the turn-based combat. And for Mario RPG, you have like Mario's jump is one of the spells. And it's delightful because you're like, oh, that's like what Mario would do in an RPG (laughs) is like spells. So in this, um, it, uh, the, the main character gets a, a little tiny pocket knife as their blade. And they refer to it as a God weapon because it's like, because it's the God, the God's use it because it's a human tool. 
Is this uh, the Swiss Army knife I see in the screenshots? Yes. Yeah. That's funny. Exactly. That's so good. they're like, you can't like wield a god weapon. It's too heavy. And so he's so it's like, like, it's like, it's like cloud with the huge blade. Or yes. Whatever. Or like, like guts from Berserk. Yeah. It's like the way too big <laughs> sword. Um, or like the the second character. This is all in the trailer. I won't spoil anything. I'm also only three hours into this game. Um, but uh, the the mage you get is like a little mole character who has a lighter. So like <laughs> they're shooting like fireballs like a mage, but they're just blasting flame out of a lighter. That's great. That's uh, a really yeah, that's smart. It's like so that. clever. It's just like so the thing about these games is um, I feel like this style of RPG is is quite linear. Uh, at some point, the game opens up more and there's an overworld and stuff like that. But uh, games like this and Sea of Stars and stuff they, and like Super Mario RPG, they uh, uh, I feel like those experiences live or die on having a, uh, a satisfying but sufficiently simple kind of like accessible combat um, system, but also just like they're they're very much kind of like a uh, interactive fiction. Like I feel like mm. the the worlds into the characters and uh, the extent to which I can immerse myself in the atmosphere is what these things kind of hinge upon. Um, and Small Saga is is such a I feel like the, it's a game that has such a strong concept that it, it would have been easy to not live up to it because the idea of being like a little mouse and you're like in humans' worlds and sneaking around in the covers and stuff is so appealing. Uh, and so far, I, I just like, I don't know, every every scene in this game feels very like, I'm absorbed in the story, even if it's linear, even if it's just dialogue, like I just want to see where this story goes. Um, and I feel like that's, that's so important, especially because this is a, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think this is a solo dev. And games wow. like this have like you there's so much bespoke individual art and characters and scenes that uh the uh the amount of art assets must have been staggering uh i haven't looked up how long this game is but i will be shocked if it's super long just because it's been incredibly dense with like constantly serving me new locales and characters and art um but uh if you i mean it's uh, i think a staggering amount of work went into this game it's really uh it's really fun and unique and immersive and just like just like a delightful like just being like a little mouse like sneaking in and being like we got to find like a you know the gods have like a storehouse of seeds and you're just like in a convenience store and there's like sunflower seeds on the shelf it's like and then like a bodega know. cat jumps down and you have to fight it or <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> it's uh i don't know it's just it's it's a delightful concept and it's really well executed Nice. Uh, I looked them up, the developer and self-publisher, uh, Daria Nogani, I want to say. Uh, they seem to be a French developer. Um, fair play. Uh, lots of awesome sketches on their uh, co-host page here as well of the game and development. Uh, it is down 10% at the moment, 20 bucks down to 18 There's also a demo available on Steam, so that's pretty cool. Um they might be in the Steam Awards as well. I'm not sure. There's a banner on their page. I'm not sure if that's a prerequisite with the demo, maybe. I'm not, I'm not, not quite sure. But in, in any case, it seems to be quite well received by, uh, by the users who are reviewing it. Small Saga, available on Steam. Steam near you. Uh, that's all our games for today. But it seems like we have some correspondence, Frank. What have you been hearing over the wire? Yeah, we got uh, we got a lot of emails. Love, congratulations on the Half Life. Uh, oh, so, nice. Uh, yeah, let's uh, we'll, we'll start diving through. And again, if people want to send an emails, podcast at noclip video. We also have our podcast channel in our Patreon Discord. Uh, our first message comes from Ollie Cant. Has a game ever inspired you to seek out a new experience or interest IRL? And what was it? Be that taking on a new hobby, sport, vacationing in a place you never would have considered, reading up on fun facts, learning a new skill. Uh, I've been playing Dave the Diver for a month now since coming out on Switch, and I've become obsessed with learning about marine biology, which is great timing since Planet Earth 3 has come out and the first few episodes are about life in the sea. I'm also now very curious about trying sushi, something which I had never had any interest before. <laughs> Open to suggestions of what to try with that too. I may even try scuba diving if I can find a place in the UK to do it. Cool. You can get you can get dive rated. I feel like in lots of places um, over here for sure. But I feel like in the UK, there's often diving centers that'll do it in a pool as well if you want. Because I know sometimes you can get the wrong coastline and it's you can't see shit and it's like kind of scary and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, the only one that yeah, sports for sure for me. I mean, just uh, top of mind because of the NHL thing. But like there was a there's a there's no shot of it in the dock. But Jeremy did film copies of. Uh, the EA Sports double header, which was a package sold in Europe of uh, EA Hockey, which was the 92 game. And I think it was Madden 92, which I think was also the first Madden, John Madden football. Um, 
And they sold it on one cartridge for the Mega Drive because, of course, it's Europe. So, like, who the fuck's going to pay full price for these American ass sports? So, you got to double them up. Be like, if they sold, I don't know, cricket and FIFA hurling. on yeah. Hur- yeah, yeah. hurling on the same thing. That sport where they roll the cheese down the hill and people chase after it. I don't know. Um, uh, and that was literally the way I learned how hot ice hockey worked and how American football worked. I, no idea like they didn't show those sports really on tv certainly not ice hockey and american football they you know super bowl was on um uh apparently my parents used to call me the refrigerator because that was around the time he was playing i think at the super bowl and i was just like a big fat kid when i was born <laughs> like like a big boy a big bouncing boy um so they did obviously show football somewhere but yeah for sure definitely that like and i i I don't know if I got, I probably got into it years later because of that, because I had some baseline understanding of how it worked. Because that's where sports are games, right? They're, they're, they have mechanics and they have rules. And like, that's how you learn about them is like, like, there's no way from watching hockey, I would have known what icing was, but I knew what icing was because I played the game. I knew how offsides work because I played the game. And I know you could drop your gloves and just start beating the shit out of each other because they had that in that, unfortunately, not in NHL 94. Um, I, I think as a kid, I, I was, I liked to be outdoors a lot as a kid and would go adventure around in the backyard and almost died a bunch of times as a child. Uh, <laughs> but I, I feel like a lot of that was, uh, related to video games as well. Like, I feel like in my head when me and my friend were like sneaking into a cow field and kind of like going into the woods and, you know, jumping over an electric fence and stuff when we were 11 or whatever, I feel like in my head, I always associated it with like, ocarina of time and like action rpgs and stuff like that and also mmos to a weird extent um Mm. i remember me and my friend connor sullivan just like walking around in the woods before star wars galaxies came out and like having this adventure and then talking about our experiences at like almost in terms of an mmo and then like talking (laughs) about mmos i don't know there's this weird playing co-op together (laughs) yeah yeah in real life leveling up um (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, there's this. There's always been this weird association for me between uh, doing stuff outdoors and kind of the experience of like exploring big, adventurous worlds in video games. It feels like there's there's kind of like a shared territory between those two. It's like it's the Miyamoto quote, right, about Zelda, and, yeah. and that was based off of him exploring gar, you know, woods behind his house or whatever. Yeah, that's a good point. That's pretty cool. Um, I just thought of one more, and it's a bit more maybe appropriate to the question, but it also is a sport. But uh, Tony Hawk, pro skater, definitely got me to skateboarding. Oh, yeah. And, like, that was... And also just, I think I got into a lot of bands through games, you know? Like, being exposed to a lot of cool stuff. Like, I remember Static X had a track on Need for Speed on the PSP. Like, Skinny Man or, like, a weird track like that. You know, definitely lots of bands as well. Um, yeah. And for you, Frank? Yeah, for me, definitely. Music and Tony Hawk, like... Underground One had no effects on it, and that became like one of my favorite bands. Like part of the reason I went to Vegas was to go to see Fat Mike's Punk Rock Museum, and, and like oh, yeah. half of the bands in there are in the Tony Hawk games. Um, <laughs> yeah, beyond that, I think honestly, also like I got into wrestling as a kid because the video games were so good. Like this was during the N sixty four era. Like I didn't watch wrestling on TV, but I was obsessed with the games. And then by the time the SmackDown games came out on PS two, my friends that I would watch like got hooked on WWE's programming at the time. And then we kind of tuned out. And now, like, I'm so hooked on just going to live wrestling that I don't care about the games or even watching it on TV. Like, I'll watch m- matches online. But it's like, <laughs> I want to be in the place. But those are the early things. I can't think of, like, I think I get what Jeremy's saying with, like, MMOs and wanting to hike and go outside. Because I feel like during quarantine, it was like, God, like, I, oh, yeah. it was like, I just need it. So now I go outside and I bike and hike a lot. But I, I also don't know if that was just from ODing on video games. But I do <laughs> like... um I don't know they're, 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 it, when it's quaint when you're exploring in certain video games. Like definitely, WoW has that when you're just going through the forest and hiking. I guess hiking that's kind of nice. And now I appreciate that. Whereas when I was like a teenager, I wanted to hike only in World of Warcraft. I, but that's it. <laughs> just through Stranglethorn. That yeah, was it. no, that's terror. That's scary. There's not, a, there's not enough yeah. loot in real life. Is my only yeah, problem yeah, right yeah, now. yeah. A few <laughs> raptors as well, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, for some emails, we had. Um, Jose Rodriguez says, Hello, No Clip Crew. First of all, congrats on the Half Life documentary. Watching it felt like Avengers Endgame, and I pictured an <laughs> absolutely exhausted Danny having Gabe Newell whispering into his ear on your left. Sometimes it feels like you guys have so much going on, I can't help but worry about everyone's work life balance. Do you guys have up and downs when it comes to having time for your passion and your families? Danny, does your wife give you crap for having so much going on? If you have indeed figured it out, do you have any advice? Best, Jose. 
Um, who wants to go first? You guys go first. I, I, as as the person who is largely responsible for the finances and business side of this whole thing, uh, I feel like I should not color it. You should have open open uh, chance to my, speak your mind. <laughs> my my rule is like Saturday is the day I got to get out of the house because like both my two jobs I have is, is I do no clip and then I do Twitch streaming and like mm. some days it's like okay I just do a Twitch stream and then maybe a little bit of no clip and then other times it's inverse Saturday is like I make plans with friends I go out I leave the house but um I make sure one thing I do is every day I get an hour of exercise whether it's like a hike in the morning a bike ride at night and that kind of cuts the day in half um but uh I don't know it's it's weird because I like everything I do now it was not the case even five years ago I was teaching or teacher mm. during quarantine sucked so I used to work in a movie theater now I'm in a good place. I think if anything, like, I don't know. I got to, I got to find interest outside of work, but I think last week with wrestling and, and concerts, it's good. So I'm kind of happy, but like, it took a lot of work to be, to be in a place where I feel confident and, and like big props to Danny for like, I feel like we'll get assignments and we have like an idea of when the deadline is. So then it's up to our own independence to like, okay, just schedule it how you want. And I feel pretty confident. Like even the half-life thing was something that was like two months of just like, okay, I kind of know when this is coming and, and working yeah. on it. And I feel like we have a very good workflow. Quarantine honestly taught us that. Like, I, I mean, we had to evolve so quickly, but it's like, I feel like we developed a very good workflow, but um, I don't know. The balance is, uh, I feel like if I feel myself getting stressed or angry, it's like go outside, go for a walk, hang out with friends and then catching up with other friends, hearing them talk about their work stuff. It's just like, I don't know. It's, it's, but honestly getting outside the house uh, when I work from home helps me a lot to reset my brain. But that, that's my, my take. Yeah, amen. Yeah, I uh, I I feel like the the no clip scheduling stuff is always perfect because, like you said, Danny lets us just be like, here's the deadline, and you here's like a month and a half to do your work, and which is great because that's like <laughs> I dude, I don't know, I feel like I would die if I had a normal nine to five. I like, yeah. I, I my brain is not suited for it at all. Like I I work very hard, but I feel like unless I can schedule my own time in kind of a regular ways, uh, my work life balance stuff is is out of whack. But um. The other thing is I over the last two years I've gotten quite serious about game dev stuff as well. Mm. And so I feel like because I'm a latecomer to it and because I take it very seriously, I I spend a lot of time on it because it's not I'm not like t- 21 and I'm like, oh, my whole life is ahead of me. I'm you know, I'm like turning 33 this year. Um and so I've I've treated it like a second job for the last couple of years. Uh and so I feel like my work life balance stuff needs a little adjustment. I feel like when when someone comes into town to visit me, like my family or friends or loved ones or whatever, uh, it's, it's I like remember how important it is to step away for a couple of weeks and <laughs> do other stuff. Like it feels like my brain is like, oh, finally, like an excuse to not work my job or to, like grind super hard on game dev stuff. But um, but yeah, also I I like it does feel rewarding to work that hard though. Uh, I I made I posted a bunch of my game art over the weekend. And uh, I had like one of my first posts ever go like a little a little viral blow up. Oh, a little great! Bit. Yeah, it got like nine hundred likes on Twitter for like. Oh, nice. I've only been three D modeling for like two years, so that is it feels... the frog? It was the frog. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, right. So that felt very good and validating, and also just a sign that like you know when I make games, people won't be like, "This is this looks horrible." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> but yeah, no, I've I've like. I'm very grateful to have you guys as a, as like coworkers in a support group. Cause I feel like mental health and work-life balance is always kind of on all our minds. And we're, uh, you know, yeah. I feel like we all work really hard and uh, we all mutually give each other permission to like, you know, take it easy after a hard stint of work. Yeah. We all worked very different. Like Jeremy, I, I feel like you do a lot of like, you'll work on a project nonstop for six days and then like take 12 days off, like, yeah. and, and go do something else. And then, but the work always gets done. So it's like, yeah, like we don't have an operation that requires. And I mean, you know, I think in a way that's why like, you know, the podcast is great because we check in this way. The no clip crew channel in particular, I think was something that actually was quite tricky for a bunch of us because it required a bit more of like us micromanaging time in a way that felt a little bit inorganic. And I'm not against doing it again in the future and stuff. I think we needed to get secret tape under our wings a bit to really just, you know, help help stabilize the money side that was kind of my my big push for the last couple months but um yeah i don't i don't overwork like i work really hard during the days but i don't work weekends and i don't work evenings like i'm a dad i can't afford to i don't want to be that guy like i wake i do mornings with my daughter every morning my wife sleeps in then i go to work um she takes over but i i get up with her and we do breakfast and then uh i come home you know usually a little bit earlier than then the rush hour, if I can help it, I'm going to be working from home now, which is great uh, in the new place because there's a bit more space there to 
convert the garage and stuff into a work spot. Um, but yeah, I, I think yeah, I've I I don't I don't crunch like that. Like Half Life was a was a tricky project. It was definitely I did some evenings on this one just because it meant so much to me. But it, it's that type of thing where you know there is a difference between being forced to crunch because your employer is making you hit some deadline and everyone else is doing it and all that sort of shit. And then the self-motivated and hopefully healthy version of crunch, which is, you know, you just really want to fucking nail this thing. Like the, there are different sort of impulses. Um, we're running a bit low on time, but I think we can cram these in, Frank. Yes. All right. All right. Let's see. Uh, Vince asks, uh, hello, no clip people. Back in June or July, someone made a post on the Giant Bomb Reddit about how good your podcast was, so I gave it a try. <laughs> Currently, it's now my favorite podcast. I appreciate the chapters, the fun conversation, and overall how well it's hosted. There's no bloat like there is with a lot of others, and congrats on the Half-Life doc. I've only just started, but exciting to see the team finally got to make an official doc after the unofficial uh, one you made several years ago. My question is, when will there be merch? And hopefully not just the Locup <laughs> logo uh, slapped on a mug. Uh, hopefully it's a nice soft t-shirt or a mug with a cool design that's at least 16 ounces. Um, and then second question about uh, Japanese TV. Did they ever air Most Extreme Elimination Challenge in Ireland? Uh, MXC. It was an American TV show uh, where they took Takeshi's ha- castle and fabricated a fake dub, throwing in all types of pop culture jokes of the early 2000s while people were making way through an obstacle course. Highly recommended. Yeah, no, we got we got pure Takeshi's castle. Oh, okay. We didn't get. I don't <laughs> think I got this American dub of it. So that's quite funny. It's um, it's such a good show. It aired on I think here Spike TV, which was like the Dudes Network. It was like such a right, it was guys. the most crude. It was like look at these people. I can't even like I don't even re- want to replicate any jokes in the show. But you should look it up. Yeah. MXC's very very early Y two K attitude. Like it's so stupid, but I like it a lot. It's very. There funny. was a show in the UK called Euro Trash where okay. they would interview it was all about like just it was all like sex stuff mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. like you know they, let's interview a bunch of german swingers and stuff like that but they'd always interview them and then put these like unbelievably <laughs> strong english regional accents on them so to be a bunch of german people <laughs> that have a big yorkshire accent like oh i love to go down you know it was so funny it was like such a and that ended up becoming the sort of like what feedbackula was if you remember okay. that old game spot show we used to do in the uk it was very silly. Um, there is cool merch coming. It's not just um, it's not just the logo. Um, Audrey did a bunch of designs for us like fucking 18 months ago. <laughs> and they're finally coming out. And stickers. We should yeah. have stickers as well. Uh, and then last question from Lee Brownhill. Hey, guys, just curious if we'll ever have guests on the podcast. Uh, if you need help, guests with ideas. Uh, they know a guy called Jeff Gersman who loves talking about video games. <laughs> love the show. Peace and love to you all. Lee from the UK. We've talked for months about doing a interview podcast that is just guests um i don't want to start it unless i feel like we can keep going on it uh but jesse's basically waiting in the rings and shout out to jesse who was it in the past email vince said they like the chapters uh vince jesse does all that stuff he's awesome he makes sure that the chapters are in and that like it all flows well and gets produced nicely and all that sort of stuff um I, we talked about doing it it's a real like 2024 can we pull it together me and jesse have had some serious meetings about it in the past few months um and it just needs to be consistent and good. Um, but uh, we'll have to see. Jeff has a podcast that he records for like two and a half hours every week. And he is now has three children. I don't know if he needs me calling him up to come on another podcast. Um, we'll have to see. Uh, yeah, I saw him a couple of months ago. I swung through LA. He seemed to be doing well. Uh, I listen to the podcast all the time. But uh, yeah, it would be cool to get some... So folks on, I was just on MinMax this morning. So um, I think that's coming out on Thursday. So that was good fun. Uh, chat to those folks. Um, yeah, if you could have guests, who would be your guests? Jeremy and Frank, if you could pick any guests. We talked about uh, Matt Johnson from Nirvana, the band, the show. Oh my God. I mean, that's a dream that, that get. That's a dream. That's, that's what I, I feel like. I'm not so interested in talking to other games media people because it's like we're all playing the same games. Let's talk about, I don't know what, you know, but Matt Johnson would be very cool. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a really a good, good one. one. I uh, Eat that Jeremy. <laughs> I've I would I've I've always thought a uh, JPEG Mafia would be a really good interview. Um, the rapper JPEG Mafia. A lot mm. of his lyrics reference video games, and uh, specifically, there's like six of his songs that reference Hideo Kojima. Uh, oh, fine. So yeah, I think it'd be interesting to get him on and talk about video games. Video games as like an influence on his music and kind of like alternative rap and its relationship to video games. That's dope. I like that. I yeah. like that. Yeah. See, there you go. That, 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 and that's kind of the thing we were talking about was like cracking open the 
the what a video game interview podcast is like i'm with you i, I i'm not a huge i like journalists and lots of many of my friends are journalists <laughs> but but uh yeah it's a bit like you know i like talking to developers about design because they actually make games <laughs> so it's you know and we tend to you know we couch a lot of our opinions here on in in this is what we like, not what we think yeah. is objectively right or whatever. Can I give you a piece um, of praise on that note? Uh, the Half-Life documentary, I the reason I thought it was so good, as I, I didn't edit it and I did not conduct the interview, so I'm allowed to say this even though I was involved. I It had a very... Um, I feel like there's a temptation when there's a piece, especially because it was done for Valve to talk to do like a hagiography hey or however you pronounce it, where it's like like a like it was so great, like back in the day, like we romanticize it like that. And instead, I feel like like there was a bit of that just because it's fun to like revel in the nostalgia a little bit. But the focus of the documentary really was on the game design, the like design modality and the conditions that led to it and kind of the scrappy conditions of it. And uh, it felt like it felt like a documentary about game design, not just a like right. nostalgia baiting kind of thing. And Circle jerk. Kind yeah, of, yeah. Yeah. I, I just thought there was, you did a really good job on it. It felt like a, um like a proper documentary. It had filmic quality and it, it felt like it really um, respected the viewer and respected the, the subject matter. It wasn't just like you already like half life. Here's like a, a victory lap about it. I will actually thank you. And I will actually credit valve for, a good deal of that because when I originally got the like sort of trim the fat because like you know I don't know how much like, interviews it was like eight, 18 interviews and they're all let's say on average 40 minutes long that's like that's a lot of footage right so you cut the thing down and then I had like a, a super cut like a really big weighty super cut that was too big that was like three and a half hours long right that was my first assembly was to just get it down to there and then I picked the part in it just a segment two segments actually there were maybe five or six minutes each. And one was sort of historical based and one was more game design based. And I sent them over and the feedback I got was, we need this to be denser. We need it to be like, kind of like what you said, the way I put it was you want to respect the viewer's time. And they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to like, we don't want this thing to just be for you to be for the the hardcore half-life fan, right? Who's, you know, who want, who will sit down regardless and sort of have us, have us waft about the game here and there. Like they said, like push it a bit more. And it was really nice to hear that because I kind of needed to hear that from them because to me, this thing could have looked in, at the start initially, it wasn't even going to be one video. It was going to be like maybe three vignettes. Like maybe one is about AI and another one's about the opening 30 minutes. And another about, and then what happened was is that everyone said yes. Like they weren't expecting the entire development team practically. We only, we three people we couldn't get um, for logistical reasons mostly um and it was it was a, a case of oh fuck they all said yes oh, well let's just record it all and then see like what we end up with um so actually yeah i think like i got some really good feedback from them when we had a meeting and uh oh, no we just had there was actually just an email and then the next time i pre- i the next time i sent them anything was a 55 minute cut and they loved the pace. They were like, yep, yeah, that's it. You, you, you got it right. Like it's, that's the type of feeling we want. And then because I knew that I actually felt more confident putting in a bit more. I, it got up to 105 minutes and they actually suggested, they were like, do you have, you don't talk about Mark Laidlaw doesn't talk himself up enough. And it sounds like his involvement was very minimal. Can maybe we should add more on him and maybe there's this. And like, that's when all, and that's when all the text bubbles got put in at the start. We only had the text at the start and the end, and there was none in the middle. Um, and they were, again, they were like, if you know Half-Life, this all makes sense. But if you don't know Half-Life, um, what, what can we do? With, what can you do in the edits to try and tie that together? And I did what Frank probably is suggesting as well as I left the house. I went for a walk. I went for mm-hmm. a drive, cleared my head, and then I figured it out. I was actually on a drive to work, oddly enough, that right at the end, I was like, oh, that's what we can do. I'll talk to Dan. We'll get more supers done, more text. And then I will tie it all together, hopefully, and give it that momentum. But yeah, it was a great. I I, I want to like do that because like I want to mention that because I feel like like collaboration is super important. You know what I mean? Creative collaboration and checking on each other and give you know forcing change and forcing innovation in in something. And you know, um, I brought you know my skill to it, and Frank did, and you did, and Joey did. But also, you know, Valve were part of that process, and they were um, very they were great creative collaborators because they really gave us 
absolute freedom. They trusted us very quickly in the process to just handle it. Um, but they also weren't shy about giving us direct feedback. Like it was, it was, it was pretty great. I really enjoyed the whole thing. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and that's a podcast folks. If you want to check out some documentaries, go check out our NHL 94 doc, which should be up by the time this podcast is up. Great work by Jeremy Jane, uh, getting all that stuff put together, a fun documentary, had a lot of fun at Snoopy's home ice in Santa Rosa <laughs> uh, doing that. Uh, our return to Monkey Island doc, uh, is, uh, I have my, my cut of it done. I'm just making sure we've got no errors and stuff in it at the moment. And then I'm going to get that out on early access. Um, who knows? Maybe next week. Uh, we'll, we'll see how, how stuff moves along. Uh, the Half-Life documentary, of course, if you missed it, it's over on Valve's YouTube channel, uh, made by our production company, Secret Tape. It is 65 minutes long and hopefully the first of many. Um, and uh, yeah, if you want to support our podcast, um, you know, if we're not total sellouts yet in your eyes, and you still want to support the work that Noclip does, which of course is 100% credit funded, patreon.com slash Noclip. Frank, what are you doing for the rest of your uh, week? Well, it's uh, Black. It's so funny. I like kind of don't care about Thanksgiving, but Black Friday. Oh my gosh, so many deals, so much shopping. So I might. I don't know. I don't know what impulsive purchases. I'm looking at the Mega Man Battle Network collection. The, those GBA what games. What was Mega? Oh my god, Mega Man Mega Battle, Battle Network is so good. Yeah, is and it? I, it's yeah, really good. <laughs> it's discounted on Steam, and I feel like that might be a cozy Steam Deck game. So it's like down to like thirty Ooh. bucks for Volume One. I'm like, okay, maybe I'll get that. But now I'm interested in the PlayStation Portal. I, was, I don't know. Some, but the, Portable? But the, PS, yeah, the PSP. PSP? You're going to get yeah. a PSP? <laughs> but it's sold out. I don't know. But then um, uh, I might take a friend to the Euphoria Mall, which uh, is, uh, uh, is a very cool spot. There's lots of anime stores and book offs. So we'll see if stuff is. Is it literally called the Euphoria Mall? No, that's what I call it because it's, it's it, in Torrance, California. It's in Euphoria? Yeah. And the Delmo okay. Fashion Center, they've shot two scenes of Euphoria there. So I call it the Euphoria Mall. And I take people there and I point out the escalators where Maddie and Kat had a conversation about is wow. Nate cheating on Maddie or not. And it's there. And I take a picture every time. Anyways, was well, Nate cheating? You know what? Don't spoil don't it. Don't spoil it. Hey, check out don't Euphoria, spoil. though. It's good. Season three is check back it on. Out. <laughs> Uh, Jeremy, what about yourself? Uh, probably do some game dev, chill. Uh, I'm going to FaceTime my loved ones for Thanksgiving and do a little nice. uh, 3,000 mile away digital Thanksgiving. And uh, yeah, I'll probably go on some hikes, although my car is going into the shop next week, so I'm not supposed to drive it. So I'll see what hikes I can access from my home. I really want to go home. backpacking. I, uh, I've been doing like research on backpacking areas around here and uh I've been watching a bunch of urban exploration videos because I was looking for Ooh. good urbex spots. And I just wanted to mention, they constantly mention video games and urban exploration videos. Oh, like, really? Every time one of these urban explorer YouTubers is like standing on a radio tower 6,000 feet above the ground, I swear to God, like 100% of them are like, this is just like Assassin's Creed. Oh, my That's God. Amazing. And it cracks me up every time because these are dudes who are living the most visceral like experience <laughs> yeah. a human can do. And they're like, this is just like video games. It, cra- <laughs> it cracks me up. I love it so much. Maybe they know their audience. Yeah, <laughs> they're true, like, true. It's just like what you do. Do you follow Shie on YouTube? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've watched yeah, a bunch of his stuff. Oh, dude, he's like he got, he got me through quarantine. That oh, nice. Those like, videos are yeah. The other one uh, yeah. guy he travels with named Poison has a channel. Yeah, uh, Gif Gas G I F G A S. I love that dude's stuff. It's so and good. is S H I E Y, I believe. If yes. anyone's googling that, um, covers his face, does a lot of uh, jumping on trains in like to Dubrovnik, like yeah. just like weird Eastern European uh, madness like that. Yeah, it's good stuff. Excellent. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing for the rest of the week. I'm, I'm working on a bunch of projects at the moment. Um, uh, I'm excited to get an NHL up. I think that's really fun, fun one. Even if you're not into sports games, I think there's so much great design talk in there and yeah. great context for that era of games development. Um, yeah, enjoy some time. Watch some football. Need some turkey, probably. You know, like a good American boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, thank you all so much. We are thankful for all of you, uh, even those of you in Canada, Jesse Garasha, uh, for <laughs> this most blessed day. Um, uh, I hope you enjoy. I like to do this affect where I pretend that Thanksgiving's a religious holiday because it cracks me up that it's, it's just it's such a weird little holiday. Uh, so, uh, job bless to all of you on this wonderful Thanksgiving day. Um, have a great weekend, and we will see you very, very soon. Bye.